But so I, I bring this up too because I'm, I'm I'm just curious as to the way uh, I'm, I, I have people who make Asian jokes, mm -hmm. you know, at me throughout my whole life, mm -hmm. and I think they're hilarious. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I know my friends are just like ribbing on me, or uh, the you know they're just making fun of the stereotypes and the absurdity, and it doesn't affect me because I'm secure in who I am, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, oh, that's a funny, funny thing. Like, if there's a stereotype about Asian people, and then I end up doing something, and then people point that out, I'll be like, ah, oh, jeez, you know, it's like, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm only a quarter Korean, uh, part Japanese and Korean, but I, I'm curious as to, like, what would your approach be in circumstances where someone might be like, someone made a racist joke, I'm upset about it. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, that's my honest question. It really depends on the context and situational details. Um, I do think it's interesting that they just took down the first episode of The Office, mm -hmm. which is... It was the first what, episode? I think so. No. Fact check me on that. Okay. Uh, it's in the old ones, yeah. Yeah, which I saw coming. Yeah. I saw it coming. It, and it was, I, sure. I, I, unfortunately, no one asked for this, but... Um, here we are. Here we are. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. Is it the first one? I, I'm, I'm not pulling up Snopes on this. No way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we have it from Metro. Office, the uh, the Office U.S. fans furious as Comedy Central removes Third. Diversity Day episode from schedule. Are you a big fan of The Office? Yeah, especially <laughs> that episode. Especially that episode. That is one of the most brilliant episodes of The Office. So they say Diversity Day is the second installment of the first season, second installment uh, of The Office U.S. and follows Michael as he forces the staff at Dunder Mifflin to undergo a racial diversity seminar. A consultant, Larry Wilmore, arrives to teach staff about tolerance and diversity, but Michael insists on imparting his own knowledge, aggravating both the consultant and the entire office staff, oh and creates his so own weird. diversity <laughs> seminar. He eventually assigns each staff member an index card with a different race on it, causing tempers to slowly simmer until they finally snap. So w what do they say? Comedy Central is uh, removing diversity episode from the rotation is so corporate and stupid. Why, why was it removed, though? They, said, they, they say it was taken down. They don't really explain exactly why it was taken down or was there an official statement or anything. Hmm. Just this video unavailable. Wow. <laughs> do, yes. do, did, you, did you hear, like, why it was removed or no. what the reason was? They say from time to time they'll, they'll not play certain episodes in rotation from time to time. I mean, I, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure <laughs> out why this is... Listen, maybe, <laughs> maybe there's something we don't know. We can give them the benefit of the doubt, but I... I suspect yeah. it is yeah. the reason that we think it is. <laughs> that is a funny episode. It's, it's such it's like a great cringe. episode. It's because <laughs> no, no, it's tough to say because like when it comes to comedy, if you're making someone the butt of the joke, that in general is kind of kind of hard for me to swallow. I get I get kind of like, why would you hurt that? But person Michael Scott, to get a laugh? that's, that's the point. Michael Scott is a ridiculous human being. That's right. the whole point. <laughs> you see an idiot making mistakes. Yeah. that's the point of that show. And you are, you also learn to love. You, you you learn to to fall in love with that idiot <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's right. the whole point if you take see this is why i ultimately think so so much that's happening with regards to critical race theory uh broadly speaking is going to lead to the death not well hopefully not the death but a suppression of art and the arts and absolutely we at theory of enchantment use the arts to teach everything so like if you if you enroll in our online course we use uh, philosophy and music and poetry awesome. and film to actually teach people our three main principles Be because we know that the purpose of the arts is to remind people of the complexity of the human experience as opposed to in my opinion politics these days which mm. reduces and stereotypes and caricatures human beings to one label or the other the entire purpose of the arts is to be expansive and so I'm not surprised if, in fact, this is the reason why that happened with The Office. I'm not surprised because that is the inevitable, that's the logical conclusion. And what's ultimately ironic about this is that that means that a lot of things that are coming out of critical race theory or critical race theory light or whatever you want to call it are ultimately antithetical to the African-American ethos. And that is one of the greatest scandals that no one is talking about What today. do you mean the African-American ethos? What is that? The, like... So there's a great author, Albert Murray, who wrote this book, The Omni-Americans, or Alternatives to the Folklore of White Supremacy. He wrote it in like the 70s or something like that. He was this really dope jazz critic. And he talked about how within African-American culture, there is what he calls an a kind of idiomatic expression, which he defines as impromptu heroism culture. Another synonym of this is the hero's journey so if you're familiar with like joseph yes. campbell or carl young and, and that sort of thing and he talks about how in jazz as an art form and in 
the blues, there's this philosophy that affords musicians the ability not only to literally play with the music, but metaphorically play with anything that life brings them, both the, both the negative potential and the positive potential. And that is a part of the artistic art form that is central to African-American culture. And so once you start, once you start going down the path of the death of metaphor, the death of context, and all of these things, you're talking about the death of art and you're talking about something, the death of something very central to African-American life. This, I love there, this there, about jazz is because you'll start on a note, you're in a key, and you'll hit all the wrong notes that aren't in the right key. Yeah. And then you'll, you'll end on the right note yeah. in the key. And that's like the hero's journey, all the mistakes along the way, and then you're- Which you're, are necessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which are necessary. There's this uh, recording I was listening to recently of Norm MacDonald. <clears throat> okay. He was on a radio show apparently with like a woke pod, like producer or radio host. Or maybe she's just one of those people who's like, I'm just going to say what I'm supposed to say because I'm on the radio yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. canceled. And Norm MacDonald, have you ever listened to this guy? I don't think so. I mean, I know of him, but I don't, he, I don't think I've heard him. Definitely He's genius. got this yeah. thing one of the where greats. he talks in a very like slow and blunt way, and that's how he drives his comedy. So he's talking to her and he goes, you two might get mad at me, but I'm quoting Norm MacDonald. <laughs> oh, boy. And this oh, no. Is this one of these? No, no, no. no. Okay. He, says, <laughs> he says, black people are poorer than white people. And poor people are dangerous. And he was just, and qu he was quoting information, right? That he that's read? what he says. And then the host goes, no, oh, whoa, whoa, you, you can't say that. No, no. And he was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you, you can't say that about black people. And he goes, you think black people are richer than white people? <laughs> she's like, no, no, I'm not saying that. And he goes, poor people commit crimes. That's what they keep saying, isn't it? He's like, I don't think, I think systemic racism is a real thing. And that means <laughs> you, and, and so the way he said it. Yeah shocked and offended people they right. started getting calls and people were calling in like you can't say that you know i went to school with two black people and they were they were way richer than i was and then he goes yeah and a guy in a wheelchair could probably be faster than me but if i said i'm typically faster than people in wheelchairs i'd be telling you the truth yeah and so it was really what i found really fascinating about what he said when he said that is we often hear from the critical race theorists things like um, systemic racism is a real problem, which creates generational wealth gaps, mm -hmm. which results in a disproportionate amount of black people being impoverished relative to white people. Mm -hmm. However, there are more white people who are impoverished. Then they say poverty breeds crime. Mm -hmm. And th actually, I'm, my understanding is it's all true, right? Mm. Your crime isn't based on race. It's based on poverty levels. Mm -hmm. Circumstances. But when Norm Macdonald just says it that way, yeah. it actually made them argue against him because the way he said it was so blunt, it came off as kind of offensive or racist. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah I, I don't know. I, I, I was curious about it when uh, you, you had mentioned something before, before I got the jazz thing came and kind of threw me off track. But That's what jazz so, does. That's right. That's right. That's right. You'll be back, though. That's the perfect but just, <laughs> just jazz to, does that, too. In, in talking about, like, um, you, the, you were making a comment about diversity trainings and, like, critical race theory, and it's, like, removing... You know. Art, the art, mm. fundamentally. That is my biggest issue I, I, with it. I guess the reason I wanted to bring this Norm Macdonald thing is that I think it shows the, there's something about the way you say things. Mm -hmm. It's less to do with what the idea is for a lot of these people who are claiming to be like mm -hmm. anti-racist or whatever. Mm -hmm. That the way Norm Macdonald could come out and say this but then, offended people. So you think if he would have said it differently, it wouldn't have offended people? Absolutely. I think if Norm Macdonald said, you know, one of the challenges we face is systemic racism, mm -hmm. which has resulted in a disproportionate amount of the black community being impoverished. Mm -hmm. And then you find that racists blame them when the poverty leads to crime. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, yes, I, I agree with that. That's very, yeah. very intelligent. <laughs> but when Norm MacDonald, the regular guy, is like, yeah. says what he said, they're like, whoa, whoa, you can't say that. And all of a sudden, like, their own idea brought back to them, like, in, from a mirror of a right. regular guy is all of a sudden now offensive. But in a different form. And just is a, he a, intentionally offensive? Does he aim? Does he try oh to yeah. offend people? Oh well, yeah. yes, but in this capacity, I think it's just who he is. Okay, it's like he's he's the kind of guy who's just gonna whittle it down very basically, and then he had he was kind of shocked that they were like, "You can't say that." No, he was like, "What do you mean?" He's yeah. like, the, the, "We say it all the time." Like, what? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's art. I mean, they say often. I've heard that people when they think back, they remember how you made them feel. They don't necessarily yeah. remember exactly, what you said. Exactly. Yeah. There's, a, there's another George Carlin bit where he talks about the changing of language. He says, he, was, he said, we used, to, we used to say shell shock. That when people go to war, they would come back with Wait, shell shock. I think shock. I remember this. I think it's I've amazing. seen this one. <laughs> and then he's like, now we say post-traumatic stress disorder. Like we can, and that's interesting because 
the the way you say something could be offensive to someone regardless of the idea you're trying to convey for sure it also depends on the p upon that person's state of mind which is why it's complicated to so put to put all the onus on the person who is presumably giving offense it could be that a person is actually empty inside and so because they're empty inside, they will take everything to offense because they have low self-esteem. I think we see that very uh, uh, prominently among the woke, mm -hmm. the the establishment left. They're, I think mm -hmm. they're very insecure. Okay. And that's why they tend to be more collectivist and that's why they tend to be more, more like... Do you think more insecure people are collectivist? What's yes. the relationship between collectivism and insecurity? Finding validation from someone else instead of themselves. Well, but let me ask you this question. Don't you think there's a hyper-individualistic problem within America? And, or do you think that? So I'm trying to see what the balance is between hi like hyper-atomization of the individual and uh, the collectivism. So I would say... Um, there, there, there probably. There, I think there is a problem with individualism in the United States. Yeah, and it, and it, it, it forms itself in that nobody's willing to stand up for a common set of values. They're like, look, I can't lose my job. I'm not going to speak up, and that results in you know kind of chaos. If you, okay. You, if you if you have you know an element of what we refer to as the left in the culture war, that are absolutely willing to just say whatever the tribe says, even if the, the you know the the change of the wind or whatever. Like yeah. one day they're making fun of Asian people. The next they said, stop Asian hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they started canceling their own activists because a year ago it was okay to hate on Asian people and call them white adjacent. Right. And so for, for them, their willingness to stand up and speak up and yell no matter what, mm -hmm. because they seek validation from others, results in them gaining territory in institutions. I guess what I'm wondering is though, uh, Reinhold Niebuhr has this wonderful quote in a, one of his essays. I forgot the name of it. Um, Everyone should read Reinhold Niebuhr, though, because yes. he's awesome. Um, where he says, man needs liberty, but also man needs community. And there will always be a tension between those two. So I'm just wondering, what, where does community end and collectivism begin for you? Um, collectivism, in my critique, is more about disregarding fundamental principles and values for the sake of just fitting in. Okay. Finding your value in someone else because you don't find any within yourself. Okay. So I think... I, I would say something like, hey, here are the things that I believe in. I believe there's, you know, intrinsic rights that human beings have mm -hmm. no matter what, even if you try to take them away. And I think we should protect those rights. But I also recognize at a certain point we have to have common missions. We, one of the pr big problems we have in the United States is actually the right has lost their mm -hmm. sense of collective in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And the left has lost their sense of principle. Mm -hmm. You know, so now it's just like people on the right don't protest. Mm -hmm. They've started to more so in recent times, but it's still typically the same groups mm -hmm. and not the average person who finds themselves on the right, as it were. Okay. The left protests for anything, even if it makes no sense. Like when Antifa <laughs> comes out and says, we're against fascism, but then actually beats people in defense of state mandates, which sure. is like, what? Sure. Because <laughs> they'll yeah. come out for anything. Yeah. So thanks for checking out this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.